This conference will now be recorded. All right, thank you so much for that. So I wanted to just call this meeting to order. Um, this is the uh, RTD Accountability Committee, the governance subcommittee meeting. Um, my name is, is Julie and I'm uh, the chair of this little group and um, we have a, a good agenda today. Um, so I'm actually just gonna kick it off. Well, quick question, meeting minutes. Um, if anyone was able to review those and any changes that you have, please just let um, the staff know. Uh, we don't need approval for the minutes for this particular one. But I'm going to let Ron take it off with the Dr. Cog regional sub-regional tip model. Now, and the purpose for this presentation was so that all of us have a good understanding of what that tip process looked like. We've referenced it so many times throughout <laughs> these calls and throughout uh, other meetings. So we thought it would be a really good overview for everyone to kind of just refresh and um, talk about what that tip process looked like that we're always referring to. So take it away, Ron. Okay. Thank you very much, Chair Mullica. Um, Ron Papsdorf, just for, I, I don't, don't imagine there's anyone on the call that on the meeting that doesn't know who I am, but just in case, Ron Papsdorf, Transportation Planning Director at Dr. Cog. Uh, filling in for Doug Rex this afternoon, but so we'll we'll get through this. So as um, as Julie said, there's been a lot of a lot of reference to um, Dr. Cog's uh, transportation improvement program process that we used the last cycle, and um, so I'll just do a little brief presentation on that process. And so this last cycle that we went through used a, a little bit of a novel approach. Uh, we call it the dual model process. It's also referenced as the regional sub-regional tip model, um, different different ways that we refer to it. Let's see. Okay, so uh, just quick context for people that aren't as familiar with Dr. Cog World um, and one of the things that we do, which is the transportation improvement program. So this is sort of a, a near-term um, investment plan. So for local government folks, uh, this is kind of a regional equivalent to your capital improvement program. Uh, you know how you're going to how you're going to invest capital dollars. We also invest some uh, some programmatic dollars, but um, you know this this is sort of Dr. Cog directed federal transportation funds, but also includes um, CDOT and um, RTD controlled sort of capital funds. We we have to capture all of the big regionally significant transportation investments. Uh, we cover a four-year period with our transportation improvement program, so that's why it's near-term. It's rooted within our regional transportation plan, which is our long-term plan that lays out sort of what we're trying to achieve long-term and the investments that we plan over a longer period of time. And then the TIP is sort of how we invest dollars in specific projects and programs in the near term. Um, it, as it says here, it contains all projects with federal and, and state transportation funding, these, these major regional projects. Um, we do, we develop a new four-year transportation improvement program every four years uh, with a major call for projects and we solicit, a, think of it as sort of a grant application process uh, for eligible applicants. Um, the, the current tip that we... Um, hey Ron. That we, yes. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I don't think you're projecting right now. I think the majority sure. of us are seeing a white screen. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see, because it's showing on my screen. Okay, let me... Yeah, it looks like maybe a blank document that you might be showing. So weird, because it's showing on my screen. Okay, let's stop sharing and try that again. There we go. Okay, we thank you. My gosh. <laughs> Thanks. All of that intro just to get, I can skip this this slide now. Um, so the most recent tip that we just adopted is uh, covers the fiscal years 2020 through 2023, that four year uh, period. We adopted, the, the board adopted that in August of 2019. Um, as I said, you know, we previously to previous um, uh, ways that we uh, put together our transportation improvement program was more of a centralized call for projects. We basically 
we knew how much money we had available to um, invest over the over the four year period. We, uh, through our board, adopted sort of criteria and uh, what we wanted to achieve. Uh, we solicited for applications from project sponsors. Dr. Cog was the recipient of all those grant requests. We reviewed those grant requests. Uh, we we put together. Um, a, our best recommendation based on the applications we got against the criteria, evaluated those and, and brought that recommendation forward through our decision-making process and ultimately to the board. Um, very centralized sort of at Dr. Cog. Our, this, this dual model process, uh, we sort of split, split that effort into two key pieces. There was a, a more similar to the previous tip process for sort of larger regionally significant sort of transformative projects. And then we had a sort of decentralized sub-regional process um, organized around county geographies within Dr. Cog uh, to solicit uh, project applications uh, within that geography. And then for those groups to, to work through and figure out sort of and develop recommendations and bring those forward um, to the Dr. Cog board for review and action. Um, there were set asides off the top. We we do that every tip cycle. So there's some big big regional programmatic stuff that sort of are set asides off the top. It's a it's a fraction of the available amount of funds um, that we have to allocate. Uh, I talked about the regional share. Um, the board, after a lengthy lengthy conversation and uh, not unanimous agreement. Um, decided to split between the, the remaining money after the set-asides, 20% for the regional share, those big transformative projects that have uh, pretty widely accepted big regional benefits and, and impacts. And then for the sub-regional share, 80% of the available funds um, tar set as targets for each of the sub-regions, um, again, organized around county geography uh, within, within the Dr. Cog uh, planning uh, planning boundary. Um, and then the subregions then sort of collected, solicited applications from all the member jurisdictions within that county geography, um, evaluated uh, those applications against the regional criteria. So we set that regional framework and set the criteria. Um, and then uh, based on their applications, their internal discussions, um, uh, selected a short list and recommended projects for funding back to the Dr. Cog board. So just a little bit of an Ill illustrative view of that. So um, this last cycle we had, oh, about $350 million or so of Dr. Cog directed funds to allocate um, over the four years of the TIP. Again, we had about, uh, we had some set-aside programs that totaled about $50 million over the four years. The remaining amount was split with the, that regional share and the sub-regional share. And what's really important is that both of those um, uh, those processes, the regional process and the sub-regional process, operated within a regional framework that was adopted by the board of directors. And then the board of directors ultimately was responsible for making the final funding decision. So the sub-regions made, rec made recommendations, um, but those recommendations were reviewed and acted on by the Dr. Cog board. We weren't just giving Sort of a check to the subregions and saying pick your pro pick your projects and 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 select the projects and that's the final decision that had to go back to our board. Um, all of the sub each of the subregions um, operated you know slightly differently. Some some were more formal than others. Um, some decided that they wanted to um, adopt formal IGAs to govern sort of how they would operate with each other. Um, some were much more informal, but you know, each of them had generally sort of a technical group of their local government staff um, that sort of did a lot of the, the technical work assisting assisting those sub-regional forums. And then there was a policy committee that was made up of um, Dr. Cog board members uh, within all of the jurisdictions within that county um, sub-region area. And they were the ones that made decisions um, on, on behalf of those sub-regions. Uh, with advice and work uh, and support from the technical staff. Um, again, they approved the recommendations that went uh, forward through our, uh, through our normal Dr. Cog um, decision-making uh, structure. 
The um, <clears throat> again, uh, just referencing back to sort of the the overall policy structure that the that the board adopted um, for the whole tip process to to guide sort of what was to define what was important and put some structure. And again, both the regional regional share process and the sub regional share processes sort of had to follow this this regional policy that was set by the board. So the board had, board identified some key focus areas. Um, and it was important for uh, project sponsors that were uh, seeking uh, grant funds through the process to demonstrate how their project uh, would support those focus areas. So uh, focus on um, services and infrastructure for vulnerable populations around the region, um, increasing the reliability of the multimodal transportation system around the region, and improving safety and security uh, for the system. Hey, Ron, before you jump on, it looks like uh, Jackie put a, a question in the chat. Did Dr. Cog board reject any of the sub-regional recommendations? They did not, Mayor Malay. Okay. So there was they really some, just there was some, there was, Yeah, there was some discussion, but they and at the end of the day, they ended up accepting the recommendations that came out of each of the sub-regions. Really good question. Good question. Uh, so uh, uh, the other the other big aspect of this, uh, if you'll all recall, Dr. Cog has a, a Metro Vision plan, which is our broad guiding document for uh, what our uh, member jurisdictions have defined as sort of the outcomes that they want they want to achieve um, over a longer period of time. That's called Metro Vision. Uh, so Metro Vision includes a lot of transportation related efforts, as you might imagine, and. Uh, specific objectives uh, for what the region wants to achieve. So um, consistency with those Metro Vision transportation objectives was really a really important consideration uh, for the Transportation Improvement Program TIP process uh, for both, again, this applied to both the regional share and the sub-regional uh, share process. Uh, but things like um, ways that we could increase access to amenities, uh, improving access to, uh, that's economic opportunity when it says opportunity there, sort of how, how projects and transportation investments can support economic development and economic opportunity. Um, improving air quality, a really important um, objective that we're, that we're trying to achieve and improving the multimodal network. So just a, just a flavor of those. And then, um, since that since that uh, latest TIP process wrapped up in 2019, we've we've continued to convene the subregional forums. They have proven to be um, a really useful organizing structure as we work through other transportation um, issues as a region. So the most current one that we're that we're working with uh, working with the uh, subregional forums on is the our 2050 regional transportation plan. So our next regional transportation plan iteration. Uh, that sets out our long-range um, vision for the transportation system. Uh, we have talked to the sub-regions about uh, and figuring out the impacts of COVID on uh, TIP projects that were awarded in 2019 and sort of what impact that's having and how we can uh, manage the TIP program to be responsive to those COVID impacts and manage through those issues. Um, we've, we um, use the forums to interact with our member governments on um, other funding calls. And then um, really it, it helps the sort of coordination among those jurisdictions uh, within those county geographies. And I think we've we found in many, many cases that just, just that opportunity for uh, them to interact and work together at sort of a, a smaller geography um, around broader regional Dr. Cog um, transportation issues um, helps helps us have uh, better conversations uh, when things come forward to the full board. And so that's my quick overview of that process. Happy to engage in any dialogue or questions that the subcommittee has. All right. Do we have any qu questions for Ron? If anybody has, feel free to jump in. And so I know a lot of us have been part of this process in the past, and so this is kind of a review for us, but um, we figured it would be a good overview for everybody. Go ahead, Jackie. Julie, yeah, I, so Julie, the only thing I would say is that I, I do think it, it speaks highly of, I don't know if guardrails is the right word, that were put in place 
um, and, and kind of the engagement from Dr. Cog's staff with the subregions uh, because all of the recommendations were accepted. And I think when you have a really good framework that was established and set up and kind of adhered to, um, I, and I, I uh, participated in the subregional process in Douglas County, and I know uh, we certainly appreciated Dr. Cog's staff's engagement in our process to make sure that we were um, adhering to kind of the higher mission and the goals that were established by the larger body. So I do think that was an important part of the process. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, and I know for, for our county, it was um, it was just Adams County, but we uh, we were at, we were able to at least make sure that each city went away with something. And so, you know, how could different cities pair on different projects and things like that. And so um, it was a great way of just sitting down and having a conversation amongst ourselves about what was the best way um, to move forward and what, what were projects that were for the betterment of everybody, I think was another good conversation we had. Go ahead, Elise. Well, I was just going to then translate that process to what we might be looking at with RTD. I mean, I think some of the elements that are worth thinking about applying are you know the the differentiate differentiation between regional routes and sub-regional or even local routes the mm -hmm. uh, division of sort of decision making or at least um, idea forming between the local communities that then take it back to you know the rtd or the larger board um, the use of metrics that guide the locals and the regional process yeah, uh, all of those things I think are very transferable. And the fact that the Dr. Cog process covers the same geography as, uh, as RTD does also raises the question of whether or not you could use the forms or something like the forms as um, your means for, for doing that local decision making or input without creating a whole new bureaucracy, if you will. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, thank, thank you, Ron. Um, and thanks for this information. This was really helpful. I'm just kind of curious, how are community residents engaged in the process? Do you all have any um, insight into what that looks like? Yeah, excellent question, um, Dea. Thank you. Um, we we coordinated uh, public engagement um, at the regional level since the TIP is a is a is a is a creature of of Dr. Cog. Um, so Dr. Cog coordinated that um, that engagement effort. Um, although you know part of it part of this because it's it's selecting projects right to to allocate funding to. It's a it's a little different than sort of funding services. It's mostly projects. What we asked for, and to, from our from local government partners, uh, kind of uh, potential project sponsors that were bringing forward applications, was a demonstration that they had public support um, for their projects, that they were rooted in some previous planning process that you know they had engaged folks with in their communities. Uh, so that we relied on that a lot. Um, but I will I will uh, admit very freely that uh, Dr. Cog continues to refine and improve its engagement efforts around this process in particular, but all of our planning processes. It's, it's, it is hard to get the public at large engaged in these things. If, if I think to most of them, it feels pretty abstract, not very directly relatable to them. And it's just, it's just hard. Uh, but we, you know, we did some we did some pretty innovative things this cycle. We, we had an online sort of map of projects and solicited people's input uh, and and response to projects. So I mean, we're we're continually trying to refine that process. I will fully admit, though, that we've got we continue to have a lot of work to do. Uh, I, at least you go ahead, and then I'm going to make. Well, a I was just going to say, I I think that Daya, you identified this as an issue in our last conference, uh, conversation about governance. And I, I agree that, um, particularly at the local level, right now, the the Dr. Cog tip sub-regional process is all local elected officials who are the Dr. Cog reps. 
So they do a good job of representing their communities, but they may not do a good job of representing other interest, transit uh, advocates, um, transit reliant populations. And so you, if you were to go down this path of, of, of setting up a sub-regional council or a local council, whatever you want to call it, you might want to then figure out other seats that you would want to add beyond just local elected officials. And I think, I, I don't know that I would put the onus on the Dr. Cog level or the RTD level to be the only place where public input is received. I think you'd want it at both levels. And I want to absolutely echo those comments. Um, I think that uh, I, I feel like I get a lot of engagement when I make people mad, but uh, as the mayor, but but uh, if they are in agreement with what I'm doing, I don't always hear that much. But I, I do think the the transportation uh, projects that we have um, we that Lone Tree submitted were very much vetted through our public process and even our budgeting process because that is another opportunity for our, our citizens to engage but i do think that there is room to engage specific populations that have not been represented or don't know how to engage and that would be a recommendation of mine to improve the process yeah i would agree with jackie because i feel like a lot of the public input i get is really kind of one-off in a way of like these are the issues that I'm, I'm seeing, or you know, these are concerns, so I'm gonna reach out to somebody and you happen to have your face in the newspaper, so I'm gonna call your name and phone number. I mean, that's how like, most people call me. Um, it's because you know, it's through our, our, our uh, local newspaper. And so um, I think that it's, there, it could be organized better. And I think maybe that varies regionally. Um, there might be more orga local organizations um, or groups of citizens that, you know, have, have worked together a little bit better than others. And then in some areas, like in mine, it's it's just a less organized type of feedback loop process. But I think that that's a good point, Dea, is how do you um, include that in there? So Nick, I see you have a question. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I think the, our experience with the, with the Dr. Cog regional sub-regional model i think ultimately it went pretty smoothly uh, and i think it you know allowed a lot of, of folks to participate that maybe hadn't participated in the past you know coming from denver of course we were concerned about kind of the balkanization of regional funds you know i think ultimately we would have this same concern and you know, i know we're just talking kind of starting to map this out at this point of kind of how do we deliver that regional project uh, or that regional network without you know, and kind of include, do better job of including the member counties without kind of balkanizing and starting to um, break connections, you know, kind of weighing local service over regional service. And again, I know we're just kind of getting into it now, and I think there's a lot more discussion, a lot more value with it, but that, that would be, that would be certainly our concern. Yeah, great feedback. Go ahead, Ron. Um, I, I think that's a it's a really good point, um, Nicholas. And I, I would suggest that um, the way that our board uh, and and the way the tip process sort of sets the targets for the subregions is not a model to use if you if 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 you went down sort of a, a similar model like this for for RTD services. Um, it's a it's a really good it's a really good um, sort of way to look at sort of tip related dollars for transportation investments, but I don't think it's I don't think it's very translatable to sort of RT, to RTD services. Um, and, and I think the the trick is the trick really would be trying to figure out what what defining regional what is regional and what is sort of local or or non regional and sort of just figuring that out. That that would be that's going to be a challenge. It will take a lot of work. And then mm -hmm. even sort of splitting up the targets for the subregions once you once you do that hard work, um, again our our equation probably is not a good model. Our our equation is based on population employment and vehicle miles traveled, um, right. which you know there's components of those that can be useful, but probably from an RTD service kind of replica kind of trying to get a handle on the demand that's probably not exactly the right equation to use. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I do. I do think some of this though is is useful also for the operations subcommittee as we're rethinking service level, service delivery, um, 
just setting up that that kind of recommendation. So, um, so this has been helpful to see it both from the governance, but also the operation standpoint and how we may be able to um, almost use this as a Play-Doh of sorts. Like how do we mold this or how do we make this to what we need um, for the RTD, for our work as a committee and for RTD um, without it being the, the silver bullet, the only solution to, to get us um, to address some of these issues. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Elise. Yeah, I would agree that I don't, I have not found any model that I would say 100% works for our situation at all. And I would encourage us not to attempt to try, try to find that because I think we are somewhat unique. But I do think there are different pieces that have worked in other places that are um, worthy of, of seeing if, if they would work in this situation. And I, I do, I agree, Nicholas, that a strict sort of regional local split on looking at transit routes doesn't quite work because there's some that uh, that are you know maybe there's local regional sub-regional I don't know I mean we would need to figure out how to make those integrated but the notion that local communities have a say in shaping their local transit systems and and doing it based on some some understanding of the priorities and the mobility patterns and the populations in say a county um, is a useful thing that I think we can take from the Dr. Cog process that's useful. And 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 to Daya's point, I think in particular around service, you're planning routes and planning service on routes. Those are the the, the key decisions I think we're talking about. Um, and I, I will say that, you know, my vision for why we're headed down this route is, and I think I've said it before, but I think it's worth repeating, we have to figure out how to um, help RTD's finances um, become robust and viable. And right now, the, the business plan doesn't work. So how are we going to get more resources in a resource-constrained environment? I think it's partnering with and rebuilding trust with local governments and local communities in a shared vision around the transit system that works both locally and regionally. And once you've rebuilt that trust, then you can go back to the voters and ask whether or not they would invest in a transit system that works both locally and regionally. And I think you can get to a yes and get to, to more investment. I don't think you can go straight to the voters now and get any more investment in RTD. So I think the, the model we choose uh, in, in that has to create some greater community level trust with RTD. And I think it's through shared authority and decision making power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree, Elise. I'm going to actually move us on to what is what we're discussing right now, just in the agenda. Um, and so that is our next item. When we talk about the, um, the governance structure concept, now this was shared at our last um, all person governance subcommittee before it came to this subcommittee for discussion. So I did recognize that that was a little out of sorts, but I felt like it was worth having the conversation with the whole group um, and then coming back um, and, and kind of rehashing out some of those concerns that were raised with the whole group. So in the memo, um, you'll see on the November 9th meeting, um, Doug and staff did a great job at kind of just summarizing a lot of the questions and concerns that came up during um, that portion of the call. And so I guess my question um, is for you guys, um, does this, are, are there any other questions or concerns that we need to add to this list? And then um, how do we start really working down and start figuring out the reality of these concepts? and what they look like um, specifically for us. So um, I'm gonna open it up to the group. Jackie, go ahead. So, you know, I what, what continues to strike me is that what is the definition of the backbone system for RTD? And do they have a backbone system for LA Metro that everybody acknowledges that this is what gets funded and that there's this higher vision of um, this is our first priority, and then the sub-regional councils or transit councils engage on the other level. And I think I would be very interested in hearing from the RTD board what they consider the 
backbone system to be, and I would also be really interested in hearing what the Dr. Cog board, recognizing that um, un unfortunately for me in Douglas County, not all of Douglas County is part of RTD. So, um, but I, I think, uh, I think if we could identify and get some, I know it's not going to be, uh, we could get some consensus on what that is. It would be easier to look at these sub-regional conversations and we would have an understanding of what does it cost to operate that backbone system. Recognizing we're not going to make everybody happy, but what does that cost? And then that's when potentially we could, uh, at the local level, be helping to uh, round out the system with local transit options. So um, I, I just wonder if anybody else has thought about that, because to me, I, I need to answer that question almost. What's this backbone? What do we agree the backbone is? And um, what's the buy-in? I, I, so anyway, just throwing it out there for you guys. Great question. Any thoughts on that? Well, clearly I know what it is. I just want to know what you, if you guys agree with me. <laughs> Go ahead, Lynn. Uh, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, I don't have an answer on that one. Although I, Troy and I have talked with uh, some of the service and planning staff about sort of the overall concept of, you know, how do we change RTD decisions to be more locally driven? Um, maybe it's through one of these formats and, and there may uh, there may be other things. And I think that they have been meeting on and getting back to us. So that, that may help move. And I think one of your questions was, how do we start to flesh this out? Um, and so uh, when we get something back from them, that may help. Talking to Jesse Carter about the service planning may help. And, and uh, I know that uh, Crystal and Elise had a, had a good conversation with Deborah Johnson, our new CEO, who came out of LA Metro and Long Beach Transit, which is one of the 24 providers in the LA Metro world, you know, these, these sub-providers. Um, and so I think she will be, uh, be very valuable in that process too. Yeah, I think that that's, um, I'm really interested to, to meet her and, and hear her thoughts because I think that she has a wealth of experience that we could um, jump on as well. Um, so as for your question, Jackie, what is the backbone? Like what are some, and, and for me, well, what I would have, would have said um, would be uh, regional routes um, personally. So, but I don't know if anyone else if that was the same answer you came up with, or what? What? What were your thoughts around that? But I actually back, would like to. I would like to hear what the staff thinks. That the the reg, and I don't know if that's a conversation best had with the board and the staff. Yeah. Um, uh, you know that forget the politics, forget the you know is that it, it, like as an engineer, I will be very honest with you. I I would be very willing to advise what I thought the backbone was, but, and I recognize then it has got to be massaged by the politics and different other pieces of it. But to me, I, I would love just the, the staff who are the closest to it, who live with it. Uh, and I would like to hear Dr. Cog's staff opinion and RTD staff opinion. And I wonder if that has ever happened. Ron, I see you unmuted yourself. Uh, you know, I think as as we've thought about this, I don't I don't know we don't have an answer at this point. I might suggest that you know, look, it would be it, it would be difficult for subregions to do service planning for the light rail and commuter rail system, right? That seems like a pretty obvious first step at a regional backbone system, right? I think the planning and the service planning for for that part of the RGD system feels pretty natural that that ought to be sort of housed within sort of a centralized RTD decision-making structure, right? Um, then you get into, are there, you know, are there specialized services that maybe you might want to think about as regional services, like ADA services, dial-a-ride sort of things? Are those are those best sort of managed and planned at a regional scale? I, I don't know. I think there, you, I think different people could legitimately have different views on that topic. 
And then there's the stuff, and then there's the local bus service that really serves local communities. I mean, that's clearly sort of not regional. Then there's a whole bunch of stuff in the middle, right? The regional bus and what what is a regional bus route? What I I, I think you really need to dive into thinking about what you want the regional system to serve and and sort of what kind of service you think of as as the regional backbone system when you get into the bus realm. BRT service, flat iron flyer. Most people would probably agree that's sort of regional backbone system. And as we develop more bus rapid transit corridors, I would argue that those probably fit and feel more like light rail and commuter rail sort of regional service. But there's a whole, there's a whole lot of other bus routes that are probably somewhere in that in that gray area. Just my two things. And don't you think though, if you develop the metrics for does it cross how many jurisdictional boundaries it crosses? What 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 the uh, volume of passengers that are riding on it and where they're coming from and going to and you identify all of that and then there are probably some I, I would guess there's some probably some natural inflection points mm -hmm. where you could make those decisions or it, it, at least it would guide you towards those decisions so that that's the kind of work I would like to see I'd like to see the data okay sure well, I see you want to jump in oh sorry go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you know, just as a straw man uh, on what the regional system is, doesn't it seem like light rail and commuter rail is the imprint that covers a lot of this? And then there there's some key bus lines like Federal and Colfax and probably probably a few other, and then and then BRT. You know, starting with with uh, Flatiron Flyer. So what is there other otherwise? And and it's a, somewhat of a difference if you talk about transportation and you talk about transit you know there's a whole other overlay of transportation that's not really our our bailiwick but is a big part of how you move people through the region sometimes right. it works and sometimes it doesn't it's, mm -hmm. but jackie you have been silent on this and i know you have something to say <laughs> chair malika actually I, I this is bill soroy from rtd i'd like to just interject because we were actually having a lot of this conversation, this very conversation during the reimagined process, and we had identified a what we call the core system and kind of a you know other tiers that we were when we were starting to have that conversation regarding the uh, system optimization plan. So basically, if you look at, I mean, you guys are exactly right. We're talking what you're talking about: rail, major bus routes, regional routes. Were part of that discussion. It was a little bit more. We had a lot more kind of nuanced because we're into the details. But um, if you think about it, we had uh, around 60 to 70% of our service was core service or, or fundamental, what we call core service, meaning that that is service that, you know, it, it's what we said is, is probably not going to change too much in, in, in terms of the way we look at it when we're looking at service planning. And then we had other tiers that we were looking at Again, we, we were in the middle of that conversation when we when we hit pause uh, in August, but what we certainly do have the data and the information that we could share with the committee at some point um, related to the core services that we were looking at. Yeah, I think that is exactly what Jackie is asking for, um, is some of that information. So yeah, if there's any way that you could share that with us, that would be fantastic, because um, I think it, I think Jackie, you're really on. Um, those are really good questions, and I think that information could really help this committee a lot. Go ahead. And I think it would kind of guide the sub-regional conversation, don't you think? Once you know that, that's all going to get taken care of. You have a sense. I think, I, I, and the local regions would know this is getting taken care of. How do we want to um, expand that service in our communities, and what are we willing to do to bring that about? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I will also say that the it really varies from county to county um, what transit you have and how it's used. I'll give Boulder County is probably somewhat unique in that 80 percent of the trips taken in Boulder County start and end in Boulder County. So only 20 percent of, you know, of its sort of regional. So, which is probably why we care so deeply about having more control over what we consider more local or county um, service because it's pretty self-contained. 
um, that's very different in other counties. And so, um, you, so you have to figure out a system that works, that allows, uh, you know, I think different areas to invest more resources in the regional routes, because that's really where the ridership is, is you know, com coming into Denver, and that's really where they need to focus, and other places where it's much more locally focused. So just to add some complexity to the discussion. The, the other piece of it is there's probably part of the backbone system that isn't built out yet, which I also acknowledge, and that would need to be factored in, right? So that, that's the big elephant in the room, but let's acknowledge that that exists and that would be part of the discussion as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess my next question is, is what are our next steps and what resources do we need or information do we need to be able to figure out um, you know, where we want to be going in the future. So um, we do have that reimagined data that maybe we could access. Um, what other resources do we have at our disposal to start kind of putting a little bit more meat to this frame of an idea and this concept? Ron, do you have any idea? I think if the if the governance subcommittee is sort of interested in continuing to pursue this concept of um, you know and I think we we shared in the agenda packet sort of those two options as as Commissioner Jones rightly said you know it the final product of this probably isn't one one of those or the other it may you know I think you pick the best features of of whatever you want to accomplish um, if you want to head in that direction so. You know, it seems like tackling some of these core questions is probably a good place to start. And we certainly can gather that information from RTD, from the um, uh, Reimagine RTD effort um, and how they define the core system so that at least you have something to start thinking about in terms of how you might define that regional backbone system and whether you agree with sort of the RTD method methodology or not for that. Um, and then, you know, I think really digging into the numbers once you once you have that defined, sort of, then what's the appropriate level of available RTD resources to invest in that system versus sort of the system that's not that, right? And and how much? And then the decision making structure. Um, I think for the for the subregions and how that interaction happens between those more local sort of like sub-regional transit councils or local advisory councils, sort of how, how that would work. But I, I think trying to get some definition around that regional backbone system seems to me like a good place to start. Any other thoughts on those definitions, especially for um, local and regional service? I think, so I'll just jump in really quick. I mean, one thing that I keep thinking about in the back of my mind is like, is the role of not only RTD, um, but you know, I, I will just, you know, share for a lot of transit equity folks, the core services in the, in the city and county of Denver, um, which just want to lift that up. Um, and as we think about regional services, I, I guess one question that I have been kind of wrestling with as I, I've heard this conversation is what's the role of potentially CDOT and some of these other services, either, I don't know, much larger regional, but as I think about, you know, the busting and other other um, things that they've been operating, I, I, that's more of a question and thinking about what that what that is. It's probably not within governance. It sounds like that's probably more so within the operations, um, but it will certainly influence whatever governance structure we, we have. Um, Kind of in recognition that they they are providing some level of transit service as well um, but to other communities so i just want to lift that up um, i also think we i, I appreciate um, bill lifting up the work from reimagine rtd because i think that can help inform this conversation as we think about the the governance structure that we might want to implement Awesome, thank you. I do want to just um, point people's attention to Kate Williams' comment about um, making sure that we're talking about where writers are um, into this conversation and, and helping that um, define the backbone. Um, so I think that could be a, a great idea to 
to look at as well. Um, and so we also had a conversation about um, on the 9th about is there a hybrid between these two options? So when you look at the document where um, the, the governance structure concept, we have two kind of local involvement options. One is a local advisory council and then the other is a sub-regional transit councils. Is there a hybrid that could exist between these two um, and any uh, specific ideas on that? Or is everyone just kind of all in for the sub-regional transit, transit councils? All right, so I'm gonna take silence as we don't know yet and um, something that we still need to try and figure out. I'm just working my way down some of these questions to see if there's anything else that could help us kind of fish out our next steps. So who would make up the membership of the sub-regional sub -regional transit councils? And we talked a lot about how we wanna do a mix of local officials and um, public transit users, which I think is a great way to, to add a lot of diversity to that. Concerned, um, the options may create delay in decision-making, um, adding a extra level of bureaucracy. Um, and I don't, I, I guess my question would be switching from, and, and I know they're not, we're not comparing apples to apples here, but like if we were, if you were to take feedback from the Dr. Cog um, sub-regional forums, did that add an extra level of bureaucracy or did it actually add um, the appropriate context that we needed? Um, I know from a local perspective, we would say that it added, um, but I guess from a, a higher level, Ron, what would your thoughts be? Did it add an extra level of bureaucracy to the whole thing? As a, as a dedicated public servant, I take offense at the word bureaucracy, uh, but... I didn't type it out. Somebody else. <laughs> um, I, you know, an extra layer. I, I, look, I think it's all about what, your, what the outcome is that you want and how much you're willing to trade off, right? The, the trade off of streamlined decision making is that you don't involve as many people, right? There's a, there's a, proverb that says if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together and sometimes the price for going far is in, is including more people in decision making and i think that was the that was the sort of trade off that the dr cog board was willing to make when they when they kind of embarked on this dual model tip process and so yeah there's more process involved I can tell you, um, you know, staff at Dr. Cog attended a boatload of additional meetings that we would not have had to attend under sort of our pre previous TIP process. Um, and, I know, and that goes for all of the local government staff as well. Like they had to attend a lot of meetings and do a lot of extra work that they wouldn't have had to do under the previous TIP process. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think the bigger question is, did the participants in that process feel like they got a better outcome and was it worth that level of effort? And so um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if I answered your question, but it's it's yeah. clearly a trade off. Well, I think you did bring up a good point though, and that was staffing and the increase of staffing needs. And I think that that needs to be uh, considered in, um, in a model switch if there is one. Um, if we propose a, a different model, what does that mean for um, RTD to be able to support, you know, additional forums, additional sub councils, whatever it is we want to call them. Um, you know, what does that look like, and what are the implications of that? So I think that's a, a good idea to kind of add that to our our purview of, of things to think about. Um, the next one was about funding. How do you separate out the funding? Now, and we did in the packet include the very the growing matrix of all of these different um, regional transportation um, groups. And, and there is a column specific for funding. And so you can see how it varies among all of them. But you know, funding is gonna be um, something really important that we figure out what does that look like sharing. So if they were saying that 60 to 70% of RTD um, is core services, um, is that how funding would be distributed, right? Or how much would the local sub-regional groups get? Um, so, I mean, I think these are all really important conversations. Go ahead, Rep. I'd just like to say that, that we're in a rather 
what I hope is an unusual situation, but that I think that from RTD's perspective, if tomorrow all of a sudden COVID went away to a large degree, we would still, it would still take quite a while for us to be able to bring back all the ridership that we had even in 2019, which was not a great year. You know, we, we on, on the imprint of more COVID, it's been a, a relatively declining ridership in terms of the total expenditures. And I think that one of the things, you know, that we really hope to be able to do by some legislative changes is make ridership more of the driving measurement for the entire system, not just, you know, not just cash box ratio, fare box ratios. But the ridership situation, I think, is critical. And when you talk about funding, if your ridership's down to, you know, down 65% and you try to go out there and say, hey, we need more money, I think, boy, that's going to be a hard sell. That's really going to be a hard sell with a, with a state that we all know has a long history of defeating requests, even, you know, on the whole state infrastructure where you think you would be able to bring people together on that. It has not worked and it's going to be a, a tough lift. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a true reality of where we are. Um, you know, we have failed numerous times over and over again um, to trying to to meet those funding requirements. And so I think right, you're you're right on that. That's going to be a huge consideration. Um, if, if I have a if I have a six billion dollar rail system that's carrying twenty percent of what it carried before, then I am as a taxpayer very very upset about that especially when I look at the potential of that rail system and we just, there's just almost nobody on a lot of those rail cars and somewhere else. Mm -hmm. and Agreed. Get off my soapbox and mute myself. Thank you. So yes, funding is going to be a very in-depth and huge conversation to consider um, when we think about the model that we want to move to. Um, so um, let's see needs to be a discussion about capital and operational expenses. Um, I think that's a, a great conversation. Um, we were thinking about inviting Jesse Carter, RTD Service Planning and Scheduling, to brief the subcommittee on current services. Um, and then do we need to get Denver involved in the, the discussion? So it looks like we already got Denver on. Um, and then how would inter-county service be addressed? So. Um, those are just some of the, the questions that came up last week. Are there anything else that we want staff to look at um, other than what's on this list um, to, to propel this conversation even further? What are we missing here? And maybe there's nothing to add and that's okay too. Okay, so from what I heard from this conversation, it looks like um, a lot of folks, because um, I haven't heard otherwise, um, are really considering this option to the sub-regional transit councils. And I think for the most part, it's really just kind of flushing out what, what does this mean? <laughs> and how, what, what do these options look like? Um, because I think we need to get a little bit more in the weeds here um, to determine if it's something viable. Um, and something that could actually meet our goals, which would be uh, making sure that we have more local government and local ridership um, input in some of these um, overall RTD, you know, service planning um, ideas. And so I think that we, we will continue on that track unless anyone tells me otherwise. And then, um, Ron, yes, I would appreciate your uh, staff support in just trying to get a little bit more information um, from the questions that we raised today. And um, one question I did have for you, I know that we do have several um, kind of local staff folks on this call. How are they gonna be engaged in this process of at all? Or um, is that too soon um, to talk about yet? Is that a question for me? It is, yes. How would you like us to engage with local staff? Um, well, I think that they might have some good ideas to um, 
to add flesh, I think, to this to this concept that we're working on. Then so I'm I'm not quite sure if that is just um, you know a separate you know technical staff call um, or just a solicit of ideas and proposals. I'm not quite sure. Happy, happy, happy to do that. Um, I've got the list of folks that are on this call, and I can go back and look at you know some others that have been on some of the other ones because I'm sure not everyone's here at, at this meeting. But uh, we'd we'd be happy to sort of convene a, a meeting of just staff folks and sort of have a mm -hmm. have a parallel conversation and get their get their thoughts and input on some of these things that okay. we 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 certainly don't own the corner on on these issues, and, and I guarantee you we haven't thought of everything. So happy to solicit that input. Agreed. I think that's a great idea because I think our local staff are the ones who help lead the charge when RTD says, what do you think about these service cuts, right? We work mm -hmm. in partnership with our staff to figure out, wow, well, there's so many people that are going to be, you know, without mobility over here and gee, it would be better if we put resources here. So asking our, our technical staff on how could we set up a system where their input featured more prominently in, in what a local system would look like as it interfaced with the regional system, I think would be super valuable. Great. All right, so we have about four minutes left in this call. Um, I think we have some next steps um, of more information that we're gonna be asking for um, to help continue this uh, conversation moving forward. Um, Quick question, do we want to, on our next subcommittee call, does this group think that we need um, a, a presentation from Jesse Carter regarding the RTD service planning and scheduling? Is that something that would be beneficial to this group or um, something we wanna hold on? I think I'd be more interested in getting some of the data about um, from our staffs, from the discussions that Ron is gonna be having. Um, to me, the service, plan, I don't know that the service planning governance issues are, um, I don't know how to say this the right way. That's probably not going to influence what I think should change in the governance structure. Um, the service planning and how service planning is conducted other than I, I do think there is some consensus that we think there should be more local engagement in it. So. That's what I'd like to talk about rather than how they've been doing it. Okay. All right, thank you for that feedback. Um, all right, so we have just two minutes left. Are there any other final comments from this group? Or Ron, is there anything else that you have questions about for us? Um, Madam Chair, I, I don't I don't have any other questions. This has been great, I appreciate this. And we've got, we've got some to-dos that we'll follow up on and I think, I think we have some good guidance. Great, thank you. Rhett, I see you have your hand raised. I just wanted to ask if we're confident that we have all all the the thinking from the Reimagine uh, RTD group on that that's relevant to the subject we're we're trying to get at right now. Is there any? Did they really get far enough to dive into this? Is Bill still on the call? Nope, don't see him. Yeah, yeah. Bill. I think he's still on the call. Yes, yeah, sorry, I, I was running to hit mute. Yes, we did. We did actually get into this a fair amount, and we were starting to talk about, um, you know, the core of the service again. When and focusing on the system optimization plan, obviously before uh, we uh, kind of hit the pause button in at the end of July, early August. There's any way right. to read that information it would be it might be helpful yeah it, and actually uh, you know not not to just to add on to the comments i think that what the people that will be presenting some of that information should be our service planning staff which again not to say that we're going to regurgitate how we do service planning but again they could also be available to answer questions regarding our service planning process thanks all right all right, guys, that is time for us. So I'm going to close out this meeting. It sounds like we have some great next steps, and then we will reconvene. Um, I forget what our next meeting is, but whatever our next meeting is. So.
<laughs> Thank you, everybody. Um, have a good rest of your Monday. I really appreciate it. Good to see you guys. Thanks, Joy. Thanks.